Hi all, it's Gav here from DancePlanet.tv. Thanks for tuning in as always. Today I'm going to be bringing you the results, highlights and my analysis from day two of the World's Dance Championships from the Alley Pally. Last night was a really good session. Um, I was especially looking forward to it, well, obviously with Taylor's last World Championships to see how he's going to get on. As always, I make the videos more fun. I'm going to be adding highlights in. I'm going to put some stats in um, and have, have a little bit of chat about each game as we go through. Please bear with me with the highlights. I am very limited because Sky Sports have still got their big beady eyes on me. It's nice to think that Sky Sports are watching me. Um, I must be doing something right. So without further ado, I'm going to run through, um, start off with the results. And I'm going to fade in my, um, my predictions so we can see how near or how far away I was. Just remember the video is always meant to be fun. And I love it that you guys get involved. And please leave your comments below because as you'll all know by now, I do get back to you. So here's um, results from day two. So day two um, in the prelim game, it was obviously the best of three sets. Sago Azada beat Gordon Mathers 2-1. It was Stephen. Uh, then it went into the first round proper, which was best of five. Stephen Bunton won. Dimitri Vandenberg three. Phil Taylor three. Chris Doby one. Rob Cross three. Sago Azada nil. Now I'm going to fade into my predictions. Zzz. There you go. They were my predictions. I didn't predict on the first match because I didn't know enough about them. So I'm not one of these people that are just going to put it out there because I might guess right. I like to know who the players are. And I'll do a little bit of research and I'll watch lots to know. So I didn't know enough about them to do that. I then did go for Stephen Bunt and the Bullet to meet, beat the Dream Maker. I thought that he would have been uh, Dimitri Vandenberg's nightmare this year in the first round. I did say that it was going to be tough. But I went for Stephen Bunton to win that one 3-2. Uh, so I was wrong on that one, obviously. Uh, Phil Taylor versus Chris Doby, I went 3-1. I was spot on on that one, so really pleased about that. Then Rob Cross 3-0 against Sago Azada. Um, and I predicted that one as well as you can see. Now, I'm not cheating with these predictions. You can look back on previous videos because I've got all my predictions coming through right through the World Starts Championship. So what I'm now going to do is start covering each game. Like I said, there will be highlights. They are limited uh, due to copyright issues. <laughs> So I'm sort of trying to bend it a bit. Um, no, I'm not trying to. I'm not, I'm not. So, right, so we're going to start off. So the first game was the prelim one. We can see go Azada against uh, Gordon Mathers. Now, he went through that one, as you can see here, 2-1. Let's have a quick look at the stats. Azada, 86.65. Um, he had... 8140s, um, no no 180s, and he had a 30, let's have a look, a 36.84 um, check out there. Gordon Mathers, on the other hand, had an 82.65, 10140s, 1180, and a 45.45 check out. So that was a close game. I know a lot of people, it was quite split in my predictions there about who was going to win this one. Um, uh, I think that Az Azada was the better of the two um, and managed to get through that to get his um, game against Rob Cross later in the evening. Um, Gordon Mathers, though, for one leg there, he played bloody awesome. I think he left a double art or about nine darts. Um, if he'd have done that earlier in the game, I think that he could have seen this one out. But obviously, Azada got through this one 2-1. Um, we then moved on to the next game. It was between the Bullet against um, Dimitri Vandenberg. Now, I covered this in another video. I felt really sorry for Stephen Bunton. I think he's the bad luck guy of darts because I think he's a good player. Yes, he went off a couple of years ago. Um, not, you know, become booming in. He was playing really well. He got in the Premier League. And, and I think that did have a, um, a bit of an effect on him. But I always think he's a really, really unlike. If there's going to be a bad draw, Stephen Bunton's going to get it. If somebody's going to play really well and hit a ridiculous average, it's going to be against Stephen Bunton. If somebody was going to do something very lucky, it would be against Stephen Bunton. He's, he's just unlucky. But I'm not taking anything away from Dimitri Vandenberg last night because he was awesome. And this guy, I think, is going to go on to be the future of darts. Let's have a quick look through the stats and different things. Obviously, the final score was Stephen Bunton 1, Dimitri Vandenberg 3. Um, but let's have a look through it. So Stephen Bunton hit a 98.143 dart average. He had 14 140s, 4 180s, and a 53.33% checkout. Do you know what I mean? If that had gone to two sets or it would have been a totally different ball game. Dimitri was on fire, man. He was on fire. He was playing the darts of his life. Did I think he could do it? Yes. I, I know that this guy can play darts. Um, whether a lot of the time it's whether they can bring it to the TV that surprised people. 
But he was awesome. I think winning the um, World's Youth um, recently and a few other things has just gained his confidence. And, you know, he's young, he's dedicated, he's love what he's doing. I see his tweets, you know, he's living his, he's living the dream, which is our dream maker. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't surprised. But you're looking at his averages. Let's have a look. Three dart average of 104.17. 15140s, 5180s. His checkout percentage weren't great at 37.04, but when you're scoring like that, there's nothing that the other player can do. That was, I think, if he'd have hit his doubles earlier on that, he'd have had something like the fifth ever highest average of the first round. So I enjoyed that game. Um, between them two, I, I I think Bunton did need to win it because I think he needs. He, but even though he lost, I think he played really well to take confidence from that. But obviously the money's not helping his rankings and it's so bloody difficult at the moment with all the players that are coming through. So that's that one. We then went on to Phil Taylor against Chris Doby. Now I predicted this one right at 3-1. But 3-1 to me doesn't really tell the story. Phil Taylor last night did not play at his best. Let's have a look at his average. He had a 96.33 average, 13 140s, 3180s and a 44% checkout. Chris Doby had a 91.72, uh, 8140s. He had 6180s and a 53.33 checkout. Now, Taylor um, obviously went ahead, a couple of sets up. Um, but Chris Doby fought back. He got a set back. But Chris Doby, had Taylor have been playing... Let's go back to the other game. If, Chris, if Phil Taylor had been playing Chris Doby last night... Um, Chris Doby, he was playing Chris Doby. If he'd have been playing... Um, Vanderberg and he played like that against Taylor. He would have been in all sorts of trouble. He'd have probably been out now. Chris Doby had, I think, had a bit of stage right in the first, in the first sort of set or two. It was difficult coming onto the stage, um, trying to put him out. But I thought it might have been the other way. If I'm being honest, I thought that um, Taylor was obviously a bag of bag of nerves and different things. But I thought that the players were playing him would have been the other way. Yes, they got the world and the, the um, soldiers and everybody's looking at him and cheering at Taylor. Blah 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 blah. But I thought that who's ever playing them, the drive to be the last person to say, I beat Taylor. I was the last person to put him out. Had Chris, had, towards the end of the match, he come back really well. He had a couple of um, doubles, uh, I think it was double eight or 16, to actually get back to two sets all. If it had gone back to two sets all, Chris Doby would have been thrown in the fifth and final set. Sorry, my stats are gone there, so I'm just putting them back on. Um, he would have been thrown in the fifth and final set. I think it could have been curtains for Taylor because Chris Doby did play well after that point. Um, I think he'll look back on the game and he'll think, see it as a missed opportunity. Taylor will look back on it and think, I got out of jail there. So, uh, if for you guys that haven't seen my Phil Taylor video, I have got one running at the moment. How far is this going to go? Check it out and get involved. Um, there's a poll running on it and there's been lots of comments. We then finished with the final game of the evening and that was against Rob Cross, as you can see here, against Sego Azada. Azada who beat Mathers earlier in the evening. Now, I don't know about you guys, but... These qualifiers now are no easy pushover. I remember watching the Worlds, I don't know, probably say 10, 12 years ago. And I used to watch them. And I think it's only best about the first of four, best of seven legs. And I'd sit there sometimes and think, where are they getting these people from? I could have got, I'm not a good darts player. Not by any means stretch of imagination or whatever that saying is. I just ain't. But I know, going back years ago, I could have beat some of them players. And I could have had said to my mates, oh, yeah, I played in the world, do you know what I mean? But it's a totally different ball game now. All these, um, what the PDC are doing and going all around the world, they're finding some special players. And even these qualifiers, you know, they can play darts of a high level. And I think that Sago Azada, I think this scoreline's a bit flat run, actually. Let's go through the stats first of all and have a look at them. So across the stats, he, he's um, 104.12, um, 13, 140s, 6180s, and a 50% checkout. Sago Azada, 92.91. 5140s, 3180s, and a uh, checkout of, I've got 50%. I'm not sure that them stats are quite right. If I have got that wrong, guys, you'd have to pick me up on that one. Um, seems a bit odd that they're both there. So it could be an error um, on my editing. But anyway, going back to the actual game, um, for that particular one, I think this scoreline is still a bit flat flattering. Um, Rob Cross come on. Yes, he played really, really uh, well at the end, hitting a massive average. At the end, he was hitting 180s for fun. He was hitting 180s. He was turning around. He was giving it the... Do you know what I mean? He was smiling. That is Rob Cross. He can play to that level. And I, I, it was unusual. I was wondering last night if he had put a little bit of pressure on himself. But what? Um, I mean, I haven't really seen that before 
from Cross. Uh, what do you guys think? But certainly towards the end of the game, he was playing really well. But Azada could have certainly got a set. They had darts to um, win a set. Um, it wasn't as easy as the scoreline looks. So I think that Cross is going to do really, really well in this one. Um, I enjoyed that match. I enjoy seeing a lot of the new players come through from the prelim games and finding out a bit more about them as well. So they're my... Um, you know, very my analysis on the game, what I thought. As you can see, I've got the results here for you all to see. Um, as always, guys, I'm going to be bringing more highlights and results and um, analysis throughout the competition. If you like this video, please do leave a like. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, that would be amazing as well because I love the fact I'm, that you guys are all engaging. Leave your comments below. I'll get back to you. Um, and what I'm going to do is hopefully I'll be back for day three. I might be a bit limited for day three highlights and different things, highlights and different things because I'm off out um, with the kids to have some fun today. So um, as always, guys, it's been a pleasure and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.